never cried about it once. Not once. How do people find out about these things? That's well, there were fans on the the, oh, the tube. Okay, and they're, they're taking yes. pictures. Yes. I mean, you know, like I'm sitting there, I'm just sitting on the tube, and I'm just like, this is neat. Yeah, you feel I'm like still, adult. I'm still the guy. I, I when I fly in and out of Chicago, I'm, I take the blue line home. Right. I'm not trying to, you know, be super fancy and shit like that. Um, where are you backstage? Jack Perry's on 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 screen, and he says. Woo, here we go, folks. Uh, before we get into this, I'd like to take a minute to sell you some insurance. Do you like life insurance? Do you have a life? Do you need insurance? <laughs> Guys, hit the like, please. Hit the subscribe if you haven't. Um, I appreciate you all so much. Jack Perry backstage, CM Punk. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I when I fly in and out of Chicago, I'm, I take the blue line home. Right. I'm not trying to, you know, be super fancy and shit like that. Um, where are you backstage? Jack Perry's on 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 screen and he says, "Real glass, real glass." Why don't you cry about it? Where yeah, are yeah. you when this is said? I was in, I was in my locker room. Did you... oh, after they left him at the airport, he's sitting in his locker room. And this fucking Mark Jack Perry says this shit. Do you feel like that was directed at you? Yes. Why? He just said it, dude. Yeah. Listen to how he just answered it. Woo! Yes, PWT. This is awesome, guys. Ooh, I like this. I like this right here. I've been waiting for this, guys. I'm so glad I didn't watch any of this earlier. Um, Here, let me just back it up a second. We're going to back it up, pause, flip it up, remix. We're doing a bunch of that, guys, because this is juicy. Jack Perry's on 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 screen and he says, "Real glass, real glass. Why don't you cry about it? Where yeah, are yeah. you when this is said?" I was in, I was in my locker room. Did you feel like that was directed at you? Yes. Why? I think it obviously, was directed at me. Well, because okay, so for those that may not know, apparently he had a a, a trip planned. He wanted to use glass. You were consulted. You said, "Why would you use glass?" Correct me. You lived it. So I'm trying to bring people up to so speed. This is this is one of those things where it's just like. There's all these rumors about NDAs. Yes. Yes. There's a big difference between not being allowed to talk about some shit or just not wanting to talk about some shit. I don't necessarily want to litigate mm. this again. Um, you say again, you've never talked about it publicly. But no, you mean like I, just I, like I, I guess I haven't, middle. but that's, that, that's the thing. So... Tony's big idea was separate show. Let's go. I didn't expect those words to come out of his mouth all of a sudden. Tony's big. Yes. Oh, oh, me. Oh, no. Oh, I'm just over here having a soda water. No, I don't want to get scared now. Oh, my God. Oh, but that's that. That's the thing. Yes. So. <sighs> yes. I love it. Tony's big idea was separate show. We're going to separate everybody. And I said, that'll never work. Just let me go. Bombs, dude. Get me out of here. Just pay me my money. I, like, um, I'm, I've already been off TV. I, I hurt this arm. Just, just get me out of here. You know? No, I can't let you go. Why? Just let me go. Who cares? Fuck. No, I can't let you go. I gave you more time. And, and I just uh, can't, I can't let you go because, uh, dude. Dude, this is this. Uh, who I'm, I'm, it's, it's best. I mean, they, these guys don't want me here. This, this isn't, this isn't a real business. These guys don't want me here. Laughs and says, This isn't a real business. Ooh, this isn't a business predicated on making money, drawing money, selling tickets, you know, doing business. It's, it's, it's not what it was sold to me as. So let me go. No, oh, I can't let you go. It's not what it was sold to me as. Is that not what we say on the show all the time? Sold a bill of goods, man. Listen, dude. Punk is cooking. Here, we're bringing it back a little bit. Oh, why do you bring it back and pause? Because, guys, we're going to soak this in. It's all about the nuances. Listen to how he's saying the shit. Here we go. I'm, it's, it's best. I mean, they, these guys don't. Best. They don't even want me here. I'm fucking hurt. I'm trying. You want to split up the shows. It ain't going to work. No, I, I can't let you go. Even though I feared for my life. 
at the monitors. Dude. I want me here. This this isn't this isn't a real business. This isn't a business. Obviously, he's talking about what happened before the Jack Perry thing, but he's saying this isn't a business. So he said to Tony, this isn't even a business. Like, this isn't pro. According to him now. According to him now. But I, I believe him. I'm inclined to believe punk. Predicated on making money, drawing money, selling tickets, you know, doing business. It's 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 not what it was sold to me as. So let me go. No, oh, I can't let you go. I'm going to do this new show. You're going to, you know, you're going to have blah, blah, blah. And then the second day we have this show, I'm sitting in catering, minding my own business. And Tony Chavani comes and gets me. And he's like, hey, can I, I really need your help? And I was like, what? He's like, Jack is, you know, cussing me out. And he's cussed out Mike Mansuri. And he cussed out Daryl from production. So little fucking Jack Perry's cussing people out. Little Jack Perry's cussing people out. No, Shivani, I want to do. My dad would let me do it. No, the Bucks said it's okay, but then you don't want me to do it. No, but the Bucks said it's okay. And I'd be allowed to do it. My nanny would let me do it. Like, what are you, what are you talking about, man? So, so, so J Jungle Jack Perry's cussing out Tony shivani the nicest guy in the world and a guy who there's no business without the likes of tony shivani insane dude and so they go to punk punk dude so either it's a frame up job and they just were like no let's let's get them in a heat or they're like we need a locker room leader punk's the only one who speaks up about shit jack's cussing people out Punk, can you come help us? Holy, bro. Holy AEW. Fucking Jack Perry, bro. Mike Mansuri, and he cussed out Daryl from production, and he's cussing out the doctor right now. Why? What? And, and I was immediately like, dude isn't supposed to be here. You know, I was told the sh people are getting separated, so there's not problems, and you don't want me involved in this because just like everything else I've explained before, like y'all need to handle this. Cause if you don't, I'm going to handle it. And you see, dude, it's just, uh, someone's got to handle it. Cause if you don't, you guys keep asking me to do it and then I'm going to do it, but you're not going to like how I do it. I'm going to smack somebody. Cause I train with Duke Rufus and you get fucking leg kicked. If you think you know better than Duke fucking Rufus or whoever, you know, Anthony Pettis, you know, you get kicked in the fucking head. So let's just be cool here. Everybody, let's fucking make business. Let's work together. Let's make good business. Let's make money. Jesus Christ. They have to come to Punk. So Punk's like an authoritative figure. Now, maybe was he throwing his weight around? We don't know. It doesn't seem like he's doing that back in WWE. So I, I don't know, dude. I'm inclined to believe him. You know, I was told the sh people are getting separated, so there's not problems, and you don't want me involved in this because just like everything else I've explained before, like y'all need to handle this because if you don't, I'm going to handle it and you're not going to like the way I handle it. <sighs> Prophetic words. So he's begging me. Now, please, he drags me out of catering. I go up. Um, uh, Hook and Jack are doing uh, an angle. I don't know anything about Jack going on vacation. All I know is there's a litany of people that um, don't want they work one day a week and they don't want to. So they want to show up and wrestle and then film vignettes and then sit at home for four weeks. Great. Oh, it's great. See that dude. They're all part timers. I've said it here. PWT. I said it before anyone else. They're all fucking part timers. That's the thing with AEW where we can't listen to this argument about, Oh, Roman's a part timer. Yeah. They're all part timers in AEW. So, like, we can't criticize WWE for that. So, I, you know what I mean? I'm not an AEW hater. I'm just showing you the flaw in that logic. Everybody in AEW is a fucking part-timer. You wrestle once a month, if that. You know what I mean? So, it, you know, there's some guys who wrestle maybe four times a month. Dominic Mysterio wrestles four times on a weekend in a European tour. If, you, if I have to handle it, you're not going to like how I handle it. Boom. He handled it the way they didn't like him. Tony Khan feared for his life. Thank you so much for the super chat, John JID. Um, but yeah, man, let's get back to this interview here. Just, but it, it's just, it's, 
just the defamation he dealt with. Oh, the defamation, the horror. We're triggered. No, it's just, I'm just so grateful he's spilling all this and just basically confirming shit. You know what I mean? Let's bring it back just a little tad here. Doing uh, an angle. I don't know anything about Jack going on vacation. All I know is there's a litany of people that um, don't want, they work one day a week and they don't want to. So they want to show up and wrestle and then film vignettes and then sit at home for four weeks. Great. Not my company. Do what you want. But not on my show. Yeah, not on Collision. Not on the show that you pulled me aside and begged me and said, hey, no, we need you, though. Actually, for this show, I need you. That was my attitude. So I, I said, Tony, you really want me doing this? You got Elton John? Yeah. And I walked up to Jack and he was sitting in a car. What he wanted to do is it was a rental car. What he wanted to do was smash the window of the rental car with a pipe. And I was just like, it's a rental car. And I very politely, because I like Jack, I was just like, Doc's told you no, Daryl's told you no, Mike's told you no, Shivani's told you no. And now I have to. It's, it's, it's a waste of fucking money when Tony's pouring money down the fucking drain and there's kids starving in Africa. No one's up in our, or wherever in the world. You know what I mean? There's a fucking war going on and this guy's just pouring money down the toilet when he could just be running fucking smaller shows. And you know what I mean? And Punk's like, look, dude, it's a rental car. Can we, you might cut yourself. It's just, have you ever done this before? Oh no. Okay. Well maybe let's, you know, Jesus Christ, let's do a run through. Let's, you know what I mean? We'll do it with fucking safety gloves and goggles and shit. And then we'll try it again, like on camera or something like just everyone's told, you no. now I have to tell, you no. now we have to fight next time you talk shit to me on, <laughs> on the biggest pay-per-view ever that you didn't draw one penny for anyone to come see. I tell you no. And apparently you've cussed them all out. So I'm telling you, no. We don't do that here. If you want to do this, go to Wednesday and do it. <laughs> what an indictment. If you want to do this Mark shit, go to fucking Dynamite on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word, dude. My, my, my word. Here we go. I see people in the chat arguing over punk, all oh, punks or whatever. And guys, just be cool. Like just um, debate it though. Hash it out. Cause I see the other perspective, people being like, no fuck punk. You guys hash it out, but don't start getting gross and going after each other. I'll just be cool. You know, talk shit and just make your points and make them fucking clear, you know, own your shit, stand on your shit. And it's okay if you guys disagree in the end, but uh, yeah, you know, talk your shit, but just be cool about it. You know what I mean? Do it. Don't do what that one guy was doing, bringing up MAGA and all this stuff. You know what I mean? Let's just keep it civil. No mothers, no low blows. <laughs> right. And he had no problem. He said, okay. He said, well, I just thought it was a really cool idea. And I said, it might be, but this is a rental car. Boys ruin it for the boys. You're going to smash the window of a rental car and you're going to return it with no fucking window. And that exactly now whatever national budget hurts, whatever is going to be like, don't, don't rent cars to pro wrestlers anymore. This is a thing that's happened. Right. This is, you know, it's almost like punks uh, been in the business for a while, kid. Holy. Think about that. 106 people here watching the live show. We need those likes up to like a hundred 90, at least right? 82. Let's get up to 90. How about that? How about that? Yeah. You can catch me outside Jack Perry. How about that? Or no, sorry. It's gotta be a punk, but there's no punk. He's just like a regular guy from Chicago. So I wasn't trying to throw my weight around. I wasn't like, this is my show and you got to get out of here. I was just like this fucking dumb man. And he wanted to do it because <laughs> so he didn't have to fly back to Canada. And I, you know, so he wanted to do it. So he didn't have to fly back to Canada. Well, my show and you got to get out of here. I was just like this fucking dumb man. And he wanted to do it because so he didn't have to fly back to Canada. And I, you know, Sorry, man. We're privileged to be in this business. We're privileged to do this for a living. Like, I get it. I didn't want to go to Canada either. The, the, all the flights were delayed, canceled. Everybody's travel sucked. But to come to this new show when everyone's supposed to be separated, to get rid of all the drama, and then, you know, swearing at the doctor because the doctor's like, it's real glass. You're going to, you know, like, shit's going to go in your eye. Like, and I get it. I used to be that kid that was like, Young, yeah, I Darby want to do this, you know, but there's a safe way to Darby do it. Allen shit's going to go in people's eyes, but they're not fucking do it. And I politely explained that to him. I didn't raise my voice. I didn't cuss at him. 
I was just like, I very much just said, we don't do that here. This is Saturday. It's a different show. If you want to do stuff like this is Saturday, Saturday, Saturday nights. All right to fight. Um, yeah, you got to deal with me singing on the live show, folks, singing on the live show, folks like this, do it on Wednesday. That was it. I didn't think there was going to be a problem. He obviously took something very business minded, very personally, and that's fine because I've done that before too, but it's very much who he's friends with. I let that breathe. Punk, let it breathe. Literally. It's who he's friends with. In his ear, telling him he ain't shit. There wouldn't even be an AEW without us, right, Matt? Right, Nick? Ugh. Fucking Jesus Christ! These guys just really think that they owned. Well, they do own AEW, but they just think like they own. I don't know. It's gatekeepy, bro. Uh, I feel like that's what the fandom is too. It's what driven me away a little bit, and uh, I hope they're all waking up to it more now. And a lot of the AEW fans wanted to like punk. Um, this baby oil is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, oil me up, dog. Oh, uh, we're oily crybabies here at PW. Um, and you know, shit never got squashed. Nobody's in charge, and it turned into. And you know what everybody into. says? No one's in charge. No one's in charge. Oh no, everything's great. It's a great time. We have the best, most safest uh show ever so he says that clearly a shot at you as you said match is over he goes to the back what happens uh i went i went to tony and i was just like which tony by the way con con okay and i was like please handle that like please and he was like what do you want me to do and i was like I'm oh not my god you. what do you want me to do uh i'm the top star of your company he's a fucking jack off Go and tell him to stop being a jack off, or he can go the fuck home. Because look where Perry is now and what the work is. He's in New Japan. Tony Khan's mad, and he is uh, still getting paid to go to Japan because he's friends with the Bucks, so he can't fucking fire him. But, like, or you can go home. What did Jack do? He ended up having to just go home anyways. So, why didn't you just send him home, tell him to shut the fuck up, suck his thumb, and let CM Punk's. Please him and keep him on your show. Why wouldn't you do that? It's so fucking, what do you want me to do? Is what Tony Khan said. Uh, be the boss of this company. Oh yeah, on my name tag. Whenever you see Tony Khan on the, on the, on the TV show, what does it say? CEO slash owner slash GM slash booker of AEW. Well, why don't you act like any of those things? Why don't you act like any of those things before Sammy Guevara has to get smacked by Andrade before fucking... Jack Perry has to get smacked by CM Punk. Why don't why don't you do that and be the boss? It's crazy. It's crazy. Just be the boss, please. Like there you I'm go. Tired I just said it. Of this shit. You know, like I told you it was a mistake. And I told you separate shows wasn't going to work and now we're all here and you know, like it, please handle it because if you don't, you're not going to like the way I handle it. Did he handle it? No. Oh, what do you mean, oh. Ariel? So you did. Yeah. What happened? <sighs> there we go. Jack Let's came go. back from his match. I was the next match. I'm sitting there. And I got I got people with me. I'm not going to say who they are, you know, because I got a lot of friends who work there, and I I, I wish them all. A hey, Brody King, uh, buddy Malachi, hundred percent Brody King. Hundred and eleven of you in here. We're at the two hour mark. I haven't even ran my fucking WWE affiliate link. If you guys are buying merch, any CM Punk merch on the way to WrestleMania, use that link below. You support the show. But hey, 85 likes. Let's get it to 100. There's 112 of you watching now. Let's get it to 100. Um, okay, let's continue this. Well, and I don't, don't want them to be punished because they're friends with me. Brody King, though, had his back 100%. You know, and I walk up to him and I'm just like, Jack, why do you insist on doing this dumb internet shit like on on tv you know and he's just like well if you got a problem about it do something about it and i was oh just like God. man come on man <laughs> you know i would fucking kill you <laughs> like what are we doing you know fucking and it exactly. just you know it's like chael says sometimes you just 
I can't let you get close. Jail Sonnen, yeah, dude. I can't let you get close, dude. Have you all ever seen that where they're doing the Ultimate Fighter Brazil and Vanderlei is like, no, we got to fight. And Chael's like, dude, you don't get it. I talk shit because it's going to sell the real fight. If we fight on the street, we can't fight in the real fight, which is what ended up happening. They never fought in the UFC. And what happened? Vanderlei steps to him and Chael just goes, I can't let you get close. And he pushes him away and then it's just on there he's wearing flip-flops that don't fucking matter it's just on like donkey kong you know like there can't i just can't let you get close i love that man punk's a real one you know i thought i was doing a responsible thing you know i didn't punch anybody i just choked somebody a little bit <laughs> some old joke uh, as cornet would say he just goozled him he goozled him so he got him in a goozle and he goozled him <laughs> I just choked him a little bit, you know, and then he was just like sleeping a little bit. And then there was like a little bit of blood. And Tony was like, oh, yeah, I was, I'm a little bit scared. And this is great. I was there, told me to stop. And then I quit. I turned to Tony and I said, this place is a fucking joke, man. You're a clown. I quit. Oh, I fear for my life. Oh, he can't lunge at me. I went to my room and then Joe and Jerry Lynn came and got me and they're like, let's just go out there and kill it. Let's just, and I was just too fired up. And they had the best match at all in. Up And I'm fired up now and I'm probably going to regret, you know, talking about all this shit, but that's, that's what happened. Okay. Dude. Dude. Okay, so but you, so for those that don't know, you actually did go out and wrestle. Yes. Do you, like is that all just a blur for you? That match? Do you even remember? No, no, were... no. That match is is. I was just like, this is the last time I'm ever gonna wrestle some Mojo. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yep. In a big platform like that. This is this is my last match in this company. You knew that. Yeah. Well, I like, I quit. I right. said I fucking quit. <laughs> Yo, he quit. He quit. Dude. Jack Perry is friends with the Bucks. Okay. And at the end of the fucking day, let's hear Tony Schiavone. If Tony Schiavone comes and says, this is all Tony Schiavone has to say. Yes, I was cussed out by Jack Perry one time and instantly Jack deserves to get what the, whatever the fuck happened to him. So right there, dude, Pete, that's why you need to just chill, take a deep breath and be objective. Just be Batman for a second. Take yourself out of it and your own perspective and what everyone said to you in the chat. Take yourself out of it and look at it from the outside in. If that guy told Shivani one time to fuck off, he deserved to get choked out, in my opinion. You never took jujitsu, bro. You get choked out. It happens, okay? It humbles you, all right? It's happened to everybody. People make fun of Mox. Oh, he got reverse triangle choked. Yeah, I'll put you in a reverse triangle. You can't shit on Mox for that. I don't care if the guy works at Chili's or is a janitor or a garbage guy. People roll. Some of the most lethal people who roll are your average, are lawyers and shit. Okay, so I don't even shit on Moxley for that stuff, dude. At least he's out there actually grappling. So, so Jack Perry, if he told Shivani Pete one time, if he told Shivani to shut the fuck up, Jack Perry deserved someone to smack him. He deserves someone to put him in a fuck, or at least tell him what the fuck you being an idiot for. One hundred percent, bruv. So I get your side of it, but it's just, yeah, like you're calling him a cowardly loser. You'd never say that to Punk. You never say that to him, right? And that's the fucking thing. And I do give Jack credit. At least Jack was like, well, what? You got a problem? Say something. Um, Jack Perry has a reputation of being a nice... No, he doesn't. He has a reputation of being a schmarmy California prick. And that's actually a fact of people who know. Okay? And I'm just going to put that out. I'm not going to tell you how I know who I know what, but I know that he rubs people the wrong way. For sure. Just as much as punk. <laughs> So why did you even go out? For Joe. Right. For Joe, for Paul Turner, the referee, for Jerry Lynn, the the agent on the match, because I, you know, respect him and I thought it was the professional thing to do. All the fans, you know, a lot of fans there. Yeah. You know, probably a lot of them to see me, you know. The majority of them. <laughs> so just go out there and give them a show. 100,000 fans, right? I don't know. You have to <laughs> check the turnstile count. <laughs> um, and so you go to the back yes a hundred dude ariel oh my god we gotta bring that back ariel <laughs>
Ariel goes, a oh, hundred thousand, right? <laughs> Punk goes, uh, I don't know, dude. Check the turnstile. Back, what happens then? Like, your match is over. Great match. What happens? Um, They told me Jack was told to leave. And I was like, do I got to leave? I was like, I want to watch the show. And they're like, no, it's fine. And then, I don't know, a couple matches later, a very nice man by the name of Sam, he was in charge of security. He was like, what are your plans for the rest of the night? And I was like, I was just going to shower and just hang out, watch the show, you know? Because I, I, you know, the whole solo locker room thing is fucking lame. I had Joe, I had House of Black, I had all these guys with me. And I was just like, I just want to watch a match, you know? And then he just kind of looked at me and I went, See that shit? I didn't even watch this interview. And he's like, yeah, I had House of Black and those guys with me. And I just said it. I was like, yeah, the guy's in his corner. Fucking Malachi Black is a shooter. I don't care what any of y'all say. He'll Muay Thai kickbox the fuck out of you guys. Out of Me Too. Out of any, probably Punk too. He'd probably outstrike Punk for sure. Um, his technique's crisp. He watches his stories and stuff. And he's, he's, a, he's a Dutch guy. He's a Dutchman. And those guys know how to fucking kickbox, dude. And um, he's a shooter and he trains with the same dudes and the Milwaukee boys. Everyone knows about the Pettis boys and Milton out there. Right. So it's uh, Tyron Woodley and everyone who trains out that way. So it's just, um, yeah. And I said it before he said it. It's like, I predict these things not to get all MMA, but it's just, I know what's up. I know what's up. You guys. Is it easier for you and your job? If I leave, who's going to win a fight? The bucks. Uh, Chris Daniels and uh, Jungle Jack Perry or fucking <laughs> Brody King, Malachi Black, Buddy Matthews, and fucking CM Punk. You know what I mean? Who's your money on? And he's just like, yeah, it might, it might be. He's like, but nobody's telling you you got to go. Like I, you know, and I was just like, well, Sam, I'm, I'm a man, man to man. I'm not trying to fuck up your day. You got a job to do. So if it's easier for you, if I split. I'll split. And then I went and got Nando's for a bunch of the boys and went to my hotel room. And, you know, when the show was over, they came by and we ate chicken. Tremendous spot, by the way. Nando's is great. Spicy, the rice. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Chips. Perry, Perry, buddy. That's right. Yeah. Um, did you did you have to have a conversation? Because what was told to us was you were fired with cause. So you said quit. The devil is in the details there. But did you have a conversation with Tony to say, OK, this is it. We're done. There's not going to be you have not talked to him. Really? The last time you talked to him was backstage at Wembley? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He, Damn. That's pretty crazy, no? He went on air several days later and said he's never been afraid for his life like this. Been going to shows oh, for no, 30 years. Not, Felt fearful oh, for dude. his life, for the safety of the workers. When you saw this, what is your reaction when you see this? Not only was it a uh, it was a promo on TV, but then he also spoke to the crowd, right? There was a a, a clip that surfaced. Oh, yeah, I know you guys are paid to see punk, but, uh, you know, I was so scared. So of him talking to the people in your town, right? I, I believe it was in uh, in Chicago, mm. just outside. Yeah. When when you saw that version of the story being put out, what is your reaction? Um, I mean, I can't tell you what Tony felt or what he was thinking, but I never did anything that would. Oh, he him... lunged at me. It was terrifying. It was so scary. Oh. And fear for his life. but. You know, he's in that he's, 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 yeah. When, when you saw that version of the story being put out, what is your reaction? Um, I mean, I can't tell you what Tony felt or what he was thinking, but I never did anything that would make him fear for his life. Except for lunge. I mean, knock my soda water over. I was so scared. <laughs> but you know, he's in that he's, he's, he's who he is. He is who he is. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean that could mean so many things did you feel like your reputation was being slandered so, uh, you know of course of someone course. hears that and you think i'll be honest i hear like i hear that and i like did punk attack tony yeah i know and everyone's like oh my god think of the billionaires like, right fuck. <laughs> no uh yeah they're, yeah, they're very they're, much I, I i it's crazy when they defend tony like dude whatever i'm not gonna get into all that which uh, is a part of there's a concerted effort to, um, I guess, slander me and try to ruin my character and stuff like that. Like, and it, that's kind of the genesis of the, all the drama, you know, like, don't do that. Don't, why are you doing that to a guy who works for your company? Why are you lying? Why are you spreading rumors and lies and, and bullshit about 
Oh, because we invented AEW, right, Matt? <laughs> right, Nick? Yeah, that's right. And we're the best tag team ever. And we definitely, we definitely created the elite. We are the elite. The, the, the elite. Your top guy. Doesn't make any sense. You're only hurting yourself. You're trying to dim my stuff. I don't know, you know, jealousy, envy. I, I don't, I don't really know. And again, it's not really the time to, to litigate. Jealousy and envy lurk. Gate at all and everything, but like, it's an unfortunate situation. Um, I have a lot of friends there and there's a lot of good people that work there. I hope they continue to get paid um, and I wish them well. How would you describe what it's like working for Tony? <sighs> this is going to be great. Man, it's a loaded question, you know, because <laughs> I don't want this to be, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the drama, you know, but I mean, it's the, the truth is the truth. Like he's, he, he's not a boss. He's, he, he's a nice guy. Damn. You know? And I think ultimately that is a detriment to the, the company, but it's not my company. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an outsider. I thought I was brought in to, you know, sell merchandise and tickets and draw. Which you did top merch seller. The month you left, you were still the top merch seller you know numbers for pay-per-views oh but they we were just trying to offload all of the stuff we still had of his yeah that's uh that's for sure the reason and stuff and i clearly did that and but that's not what the place was about and some people didn't like that is there any part of you that's always like man i'm 45 i'm tired of this shit yeah very much so yeah and you, why i mean did you use you, you you saw my exasperated press conference when i'm eating mindy's yes of course drinking spindrift so it's very much a guy who's just i'm too old for this shit 